Welcome to the broadcast today. Let me just ask you to stop for just a moment and listen to what God is going to speak to us through his word. We're in the book of Galatians, and I'm very excited to continue on. Galatians chapter number one. We're almost two-thirds of the way through this first chapter, and I think God has laid something on my heart that will be a help to you. Now, before we jump into our Bible study, I'd like to read a letter from the front, a letter from somebody whose name is Paul. He's from Ontario, Canada. Now, before I read this here, I'd like to point out and just give you a little bit of background on me, on Micah McCurry, a staff evangelist, administrator uh, in the leadership role here at Bible Tracks Incorporated in Bloomington, Illinois. Let me tell you a little bit about myself as it pertains to, to this letter that I am about to read. I cut my teeth preaching at nursing homes, at long-term care facilities. I think of the opportunities that I had. I preached about once a month or so. My family and I on Sunday afternoon after a morning service of church, Sunday school, and the AM service, we would go to a long-term care facility, a nursing home, and had the opportunity to lead the singing there and do special music and then also preach. I was called by God into the ministry as a preacher, as a young man, as a young junior or a teenage boy, I just turning over from preteen to teenage. And I was given so many opportunities to open God's word and expound upon it. Now, can I tell you this? There were some older folks, some saints of God that were absolutely just gems. They were jewels. The fact that they would listen to this young whippersnapper open God's word in my stunted way, talk to them about the oracles of God, the fact that they would listen means so much to me. Let me explain to you this, friend. You cannot, it is patently impossible to go to a nursing home and to try to minister to those folks there. And do your best to encourage them and not walk away encouraged yourself. That's what I always thought. Even on those Sundays where I was tired, where I thought, you know what sounds good right now? Some lunch. You know what sounds good right now? A nap. Every Sunday that we would walk through those doors, whether I wanted to or not, whenever we'd walk back out, I would always be encouraged. So let me encourage you in this. Find a nursing home near you. Be a blessing to somebody. Visit some of those folks. Some of those folks in there have such wisdom, have such amazing experiences of life. Just sit down and talk to them. But bring a Bible with you. Sing some songs. Be a blessing. That brings me to a letter from the front. A man named Paul from Ontario, Canada says this, Dear sir or madam, the reason why I'm writing to you is this. It's to ask if you could send me a sample packet of your tracks. He says, one copy of each of the tracks that you send out. He says, I live in a long-term care nursing home. We have a Bible group that meets in the evening to read the Bible and pray for any requests that are mentioned. I thought that each night, now think about this. I don't know how God led him to this thought, but what a great thought. Paul says, I thought that each night I could read a few of your tracks to the group. This would be a real blessing to the group, and the message of the gospel could go forth to all the people. Now, Paul, let me say this. I salute you. I salute the fact that even in a long-term care, a nursing home facility, you are still concerned with the souls of those in that Bible study group. There are about 15 people that are in the group that would be really blessed by this. Thank you very, very much. I really do appreciate this. Wishing you all the best. Yours in Christ. Paul from Ontario, Canada. Such a blessing to read a letter like that. For people that have a burden for other people's souls, for people that have a burden to read the Bible and pray for requests that are mentioned. Paul, thank you so much for that letter. We greatly appreciate it. And let me encourage you to pick up some of our tracks. Paul requested a sample packet. You can get a sample packet yourself. One each of of every track that we put out. You can get them in this beautiful, nice cover. We'll send it to you with a little bit of information about our ministry, Bible Tracks Incorporated, and we will send it to you. Get this for free. We do not even charge for shipping. 
If you'd like to partner with us and help offset some of the costs of the tracks that we send out by the millions around the world, you can do that. Go to our website, BibleTracksInc.org, or you can text BTI to this number, 22525. Again, that's BTI to this number, 22525. We would love if you would financially partner with us. We also need your prayers please contact us. Hello at BibleTracksInc.org. I would love to hear from you via email as well. Let's grab our Bibles. The book of Galatians, I mentioned that we're about two-thirds of the way through. Verse number 15, we talked about pleasing God the other day. Galatians 1, verse number 15 says this. Paul continues, verse number 15, but when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son, In me, we'll come back to that in just a moment, that I might preach him among the heathen immediately, I conferred not with flesh and blood. Let's go back to that first phrase of verse number 16. We'll unpack the rest of this context in just a moment. But Paul says, it pleased God to reveal his son, meaning Christ Jesus, in Paul. Can I tell you, Christian friend, that God's goal, God's will, God's intention for your life is to reveal his son in you. Can you imagine a higher calling? Because I can't. The fact that God wants us to be a reflection of him. Think about this. On the darkest of nights, as the clouds break through and you start to see the moon, Remember this, that the moon simply shows a reflection of the sun's light. Of course, I know that you knew that. But think about that. God wants us, just like on that pitch black night where the moon starts to break through the clouds and illuminates everything around you, God wants you to be a revelation of his son to the lost and dying world. Now, we could never encapsulate and really capture the, the brilliance and the amazingness and the power, the, the, the vibrance of Jesus Christ in and of ourselves. But friend, if we could just be a simple reflection of Christ to reveal Christ, that's what Paul's goal was. And that's what he did for the, for the hundreds and thousands of words that he wrote of our Bible. Paul was simply revealing Christ through himself. How can you reveal Christ in your own life? Let's get practical for just a moment. Think about that. What can you do in your own life to reveal God to your coworkers, to your family, to your friends? Think about that and put yourself in Paul's shoes. What did Paul do to reveal Christ? Everything that he could. Friend, what should you and I do to reveal Christ to a lost and dying world? May I be blunt for just a moment? Our world is going to hell, and it is our responsibility as Christians. That that word Christian, that means little Christ. It's our responsibility to tell them about the only one, Christ Jesus, that can save them from their sins. What are we doing to make good on that job? On the will of God, the Great Commission, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. What's the gospel? It's a revelation of Christ, the death, the burial, and the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ. That is what we are supposed to reveal to the world. And what are we doing to accomplish that? Can I tell you, friend, living like the world, talking like the world, acting like the world, watching the world's entertainment, listening to the world's artists is not the way that you reveal Christ in you. So that hits a little close to home. I sure hope so because it hits close to home for me too. It's a little bit convicting right here in the studio room of Bible Tracks Incorporated. The Bible Tract Echoes host, Micah McCurry, me, I struggle with that too. How can I best reveal God? How can I best reveal Christ, the Savior of my soul, when I cover myself up in the world's paraphernalia and I use the world's language? How could I do that? I can't. I can't represent Christ and man. I can't represent God and the world at the same time. What did Paul have to do? He had to divorce himself from public 
opinion. Let's let the Bible tell us how Paul revealed God in himself. Verse number 16, to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the heathen. Immediately, what did Paul do? He went and told his mom and his dad. No, no, no. He went and talked to his religious elders. No. He went and talked to his friends. No, uh, no, he did not. He Did he post on Facebook? No, he did not. Did he talk about it and ask for other people's opinion? Absolutely not. Here's what he did. Immediately, I conferred not with flesh and blood. Verse number 17. Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. What did he do? Verse number 18. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him for 15 days. What did Paul do? God expounded to Paul, told him exactly what he wanted. He wanted Paul to reveal God in and of himself. He wanted Paul to be a Christian. He wanted Paul to convert from this this, this Jewish faith, this, this fake and false faith, and become a Christian. Paul decided, that's what I'm going to do. On that, on, that, uh, that, on that road there when he was literally knocked off of his horse by the brilliance of God and God asked him, why kick you against the pricks? Why do you decide to resist me? Paul decides, I'm going to listen to God. And what does he do? Did he ask for man's opinion? No. He went for three years by himself into Arabia. He didn't need man's opinion when he had God's. I think too often... We let ourselves be talked out of what God wants us to do by man's opinion. Can I tell you, when you have peace with God, your ability to have harmony with men is much more likely. But can I tell you this? When you have peace with God and you're following his will, it doesn't matter if you have harmony with man. It doesn't matter what man thinks of you. It doesn't matter what the secular or religious or scientific community thinks of you and your beliefs. If you have God, the God of the Bible on your side, then you already have a majority, friend. Why would you want to disrupt the clear teaching of God with the opinions of man? Now, does God speak through people? Absolutely. Does a preacher, when he gets up behind the pulpit and preaches the clear teachings of God, is he someone that you should listen to? Absolutely. But can I tell you this? If you let an unregenerate, unspiritual, lost man or woman talk you out of what you know God wants you to do, then friend, you're missing out. You're missing out on what God has for you. The announcer is going to be on in just a moment, but I'd like to ask you this. What are you doing to reveal God in you? Don't be dismayed or dissuaded by other people. Listen to God.